What's up guys, Cameron here from Drums and Drams, and today I'm gonna review the newest release from the Buffalo Trace Distillery. That is this Traveler Blended Whiskey in collaboration with Chris Stapleton, which means we're talking about a celebrity whiskey. Now this is bottled at 90 proof or 45% ABV, and unfortunately it does not carry the designation of being a straight whiskey or a bourbon or a rye. The only information that we get on the front label is that this is a blended whiskey, and that offers very little, if any, information about what's actually in the blend. Now, I don't believe at this point Buffalo Trace has come out and shed any light on you know, what they've put in this blend, but what I've been hearing is that while it does say on the back label, produced and bottled by Buffalo Trace, that this is actually kind of an overall Sazerac product, which means they have access to Canadian whiskey, to Barton 1792, and some of the other stuff that Sazerac owns, and maybe those products are in the blend, which is why it's called the blended whiskey. I don't know if that's true, it's really not worth speculating on here at the beginning of the video. I will kind of address that as I nose and taste through this whiskey. But at the end of the day, while I would love to see more transparency, I don't care about any of that. I don't care about what's in the blend for right now. And I especially don't care about the Chris Stapleton connection and the fact that people are saying, oh, maybe he's sober. Maybe it was just a money grab. Uh, you know, he came out and cleared the air and I don't care about any of that. Uh, it is probably a money grab. That's what most of the celebrity whiskeys out there are. And speaking of money, this is coming in at $40 if you find it for the correct price. And when you think about Buffalo Trace products, I'm not a Buffalo Trace hater. I absolutely love a lot of their stuff. But you look at 40 bucks and you think about what you can get for $40 with a Buffalo Trace product. Let's rule out the crazy ones, okay? The Weller 12s. But let's look at standard Buffalo Trace Eagle Rare, Sazerac Rye, Weller Special Reserve. Again, if you find those at SRP, those are all in this umbrella of $40. And that means for me, when I'm talking about a 90 proofer that has no transparency, this is really gonna have to blow me away or exceed expectations for me to wanna recommend this to anybody. So with that said, let's go ahead and check this thing out on the nose now. We're gonna keep talking about it as we go, but it's time to, to smell this thing. And let me just quickly note, that this is the very first time I've nosed and tasted this whiskey. The first pour right here in my glass, no prep work for this video. I wanted to be surprised. Let's see how this goes. And it is, it is as I feared. <laughs> it is flavorless or aromaless. Let's just go with that on the nose. There's nothing going on here. It's very bland. Yeah, it has that like a kind of grain neutral spirit white dog type note to it, where you just feel like you're searching for flavor. This is kind of like the LaCroix of, of whiskeys for me. It's like, uh, you know, if you have like a, if you have a Perrier or a, you know, a sparkling, sparkling water, but it's got that lime flavor in it too. And it's just kind of in the background and you're searching for it. It's like watching the TV on mute, you know? That's kind of what smelling this whiskey's like. It's just, it's, it's like it's barely there. But let, let me give you some notes so that I'm not just complaining about it. One of, the, one of the interesting things about this, you get a little hint of Buffalo Trace honey, you get a little bit of like this bright banana note, which is reminiscent of some uh, Barton 1792 products. Maybe that's in the blend, I don't know. So a little honey, little banana. Again, these are so faint. It's in, in front of all of that, it's just alcohol. Even at 90 proof, it's just alcohol coming out of the glass. There's also this note of dry grass which is kind of a weird one. It's like when you go outside uh, during the summer and you know your grass is dying, it's been really hot, really dry, there's like a certain smell to that. And, and that's what this kind of smells like. Yeah, and otherwise there is kind of a fruit cup uh, juice or syrup note. So when you get those really cheap fruit cups from the store and you know it's your packaged pears and apricot or, or peaches or whatever you know whatever's in there with maybe the one little cherry on top the syrup that's that's in it which is just like sugary and kind of you know whatever it's like that again turned all the way down to like a two out of ten but that's that's another note that's in here and then on the spice front just a little kick of like a white pepper just super generic oak spice so on the nose. Um, I don't want to like. I don't want to say this whiskey sucks. It's not great. Let's just say it's not great. Let's go to the palate now. Cheers. There and gone. <laughs> wow, I have so many issues with this whiskey, and I usually don't make reviews that are like super negative. But 
there's not a lot about this whiskey that's redeeming. And in the aftertaste now on the finish, it just tastes like sugary, like sugary, kind of nasty in my mouth. As it went back, there's a flash of spice at the front. And then it's all these really uh, watery, generic, sweet notes that I talked about exactly like it is on the nose. So consistency, let's you know give them a point for that. But this is not, it's certainly not an enthusiast's drink. It definitely seems like a cash grab at the price point. And, you know, one thing that people, I think, get wrong about entry bottles, entry level bottles for non whiskey drinkers or maybe people switching over, you know, from different spirits or something. I think what we get wrong about that often is that we think low proof and light flavor are great gateways into whiskey. And I think it is the exact opposite. In my experience, when I give people really light products like a Michter's American or like, you know, something along these lines where you have light flavor, low proof, you know, an 80 to 84 proofer, people don't like that stuff because oftentimes it's young whiskey, which is why it's cheap. It's watered down as well, which is why it's cheap. You give it to them and all that you can get as a new drinker is alcohol and it burns and people don't like it. And it's like, well, you have to get used to the burn. I don't think that's the way to do it. I think the way to do it is to maximize flavor at a given proof point. And that might mean you're introducing somebody to whiskey with a 100 or $150 bottle. It's the same in anything else, right? Like I'm not going to try to get you into drinking, uh, I don't know, insert something here, beer. I'm not gonna give you the crappiest beer. You might want something more flavorful. Or if I'm gonna get you into sushi, let's not go to this like nasty joint down the street. Let's go to a, like a pretty nice sushi place and maybe that's gonna be the better gateway. I think you get what you pay for. And so in my experience, when I've introduced people to whiskey, a lot of times I go to a Sam Houston 15 where you're like right around that 100 proof mark. You have a ton of age, tons of like flavor concentrated into that proof, which might seem like a little bit of a high proof for an entry level drinker. It's not, it's not about the proof. It's about how much alcohol actually comes forward in the whiskey. And when you have a lot of age, a lot of flavor and just high quality stuff, you're gonna get less alcohol, less burn, and I think it's gonna be a more enjoyable experience. Now this rant has nothing to do with this bottle uh, in a specific way, but it does have to do with the idea that this is being marketed to people who are fans of Chris Stapleton. This happens with a lot of celebrity whiskeys. It's at that 90 proof, better than 80, I guess, but it doesn't do it any favors because whatever's blended in here, which I could absolutely see being Canadian and being Barton and maybe a little splash of something Buffalo Trace. I have no idea. By blending those things together, they feel young. It's not a high quality. Yeah, it's a quick finish. It's not a super long and intense spicy palette, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna help somebody like whiskey. They're gonna choke this down in my opinion. So if I were you and I were spending $40 on a bottle, and I'm looking for something maybe for myself, buying it as a gift. And let's say that I or the person that's receiving that bottle is not the biggest whiskey nerd. They don't really know much about it. You can do a lot more with 40 bucks by snagging. Let's start with standard Buffalo Trace is gonna be two to three times better than this in my opinion. A Russell's Reserve 10 year if you wanna get into the oaky side of things. A Cooper's Craft 100 if you wanna really experience spicy, fruity flavors from Brown Foreman. And if you can't find the Cooper's Craft 100, grab yourself an Old Forster 100, an Old Forster Rye, even an Old Forster 86. There is so much better you can do than this bottle. 1792 small batch also comes to mind. But in, in my book, avoid the traveler like the plague because you have to travel to find the flavors. I know that's that's absolutely terrible, but not a great whiskey. I don't even need to do a second sip. I'm signing off now. Cheers, and I will see you guys next time here on Drums and Drams.